All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Data AI Summit, and uh, look who I have with me, Madrik and uh, Praveen. So excited to chat with you both on the Ravid Show. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about data transformation, to be honest, and Professi is kind of leading the way there. And uh, I'm wanting to learn a little about uh, just the basics about data transformation, about uh, why are people excited about it? Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Ravid, for having me on the show. Sure. Super excited about this. Yeah, data transformation, very deep topic. I think people very often start talking about the AI, about the business outcomes that they're gonna get out of platforms like Databricks or Prophecy. Right. But to get there, everyone needs to have clean data on the other side. Exactly. That's the unsexy thing that no one really wants to talk about. Yeah. But where majority of our work as data engineers, machine learning engineers, data scientists is unfortunately going in. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and so so essentially data transformation very simple. We ingest data from various sources. Mm -hmm. Every enterprise has a tremendous amount of those sources. We need to clean it up for the purposes of now AI and machine learning. Yeah, okay. Now uh, that's, that's quick and very nice, yeah, well, well explained. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you, Praveen. What are the transformation issues that you are seeing in the space? Any thoughts? Yeah, so data, I think everything looks simple. But right. cost of moving data is pretty high. Yeah. And this cost uh, covers both the human cost and the machine cost. Right. So when you say that data moving from point A to point B, I think that's the most complex things. On the top of that, when you're talking about is uh, transforming that data, it is more complex. So right. when the humans are involved and you have to build something, logics and all those, it takes a while. It adds the latency and all those. So Again, I think it looks simple, but it's not that simple. Yeah, exactly. Those are good uh, good insights, definitely. Sometimes it's like, oh, it's so simple, but it is not. You're right about that. Um, also, quick question. How do you solve this problem then? That's something, you know, obviously a lot of leaders out there kind of feel. Yeah, so I think uh, this problem is there forever. And, you know, I think we should, we should not look at this in a way that I'm going to build the monolithic, some kind of systems and all those. Mm. Rather, we should look at it in a different way. Right. How do we, I can provide this a data pipeline as a service so that I can make the things simpler and uh, it should be usable, people should be able to use it and they should feel about it. It should not be always about actual technology, rather it should be the outcome of that. Like when I, when I give this service to the user, they should be able to take it out, and I think they should be able to use that data for yeah. the outcome purpose. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a very good point. And uh, what do you think? What's the separation between the responsibilities of business and engineering use? Uh, like, how do you define that? Yeah. So I think there are a couple of things when we talk about. So different people, different within the organization, they have their role, yeah. responsibilities, and all those. So when I talk about it, I think when you integrate the data from right. different data sources. You need to bring it at the center repository. Yeah. That's the first place. You True. can call that a core data model or a centralized place where you bring all that data. Right. And then that's where your engineering resources, they come into the picture. Yeah. So I think when we talk about that, I think engineering guys, they bring the data, right. they build those, all those transformation pipelines and all those, put that data into a centralized place, that's where your engineering resources come to the picture. Because engineering team, they stand behind that data sets with the highest quality of data and everything. That's where the engineering guys should stop. Second thing will come on the business side. Now you have two kinds of systems. One is, I think, you provide your uh, the canned reports and all those. We provide the answers on the what. Right. Suppose you have some kind of metrics on the financials and all those. You provide those numbers to the business. But how to answer the question on why? Yes. And that's that's something I think, let me give the example here. Mm -hmm. Suppose you have some approval rate, which is 13%. Suddenly that rate went down to 7%. Yeah. How to answer that? That's where your self-service data pipelines come into the picture. So you're talking about how these role responses are different. Yeah. Engineering versus the business side. Yeah. So data pipeline service, you can give it to both, right? Engineering organization, as well as to the your the business as well. Business can take the data from your centralized repository where you are loaded. Mm -hmm. and yeah. They can create their data, their their own spaces, and answer the ad hoc questions on the top of. You mentioned about something which is pipeline as a service. I'm kind of interested and intrigued to learn about that. Can you break down that for me, like a yeah. little bit? So it's a very 
when we say a service yeah. service will have always some kind of standards or right. i think you will say that it will come few uh, bells and whistles yeah and i'll give the example and why those are required let me give the example suppose you ask the business to build some pipelines they will build it they will be passionate about it but after 6 months it doesn't work because yeah. monolithic is failing and all those nobody wanted to get in the middle of night and say that right. oh i want to restart this pipeline yeah so then it becomes the problem of the engineering organization to rather actually data pipeline is a service when we say service it should have the what you call the alerts monitoring it should have this restartability and all these fails and all those so that data quality everything it should come all True. the bells and whistles along with that service means this is what the standards is comes along with that so that it fulfill those all of those criteria on the data quality which magic was saying right now alerts monitoring which is something is not right it should send you the alert so that somebody take the action on it very so, important right yes yeah those are fantastic insights praveen thanks mm-hmm. for sharing those magic uh, quick question for you uh, you just launched the data transformation copilot for data breaks what does it mean for your customers what can they expect yeah. i'm kind of excited as well because uh, you'll always have whenever you'll come up with a launch you'll make big waves in the space and uh, obviously the data community is always excited to learn about what you guys do you're too nice ravit well i think a lot of the challenges that praveen has been sharing are resonating tremendously with a lot of our customers true so that's why we've built the data transformation copilot to bridge that gap between the engineering users that know how to code on databricks and the business users who just want to get their job done and want to start using that data yeah So data transformation copilot now enables both of those different teams to be productive right. all the bills and whistles included but it also uses all the new fancy generative AI capabilities so before prophecy was already all in on low code drag and drop visual development with coding as well but now the AI steps in and increases the productivity even further even because right. now you can use capabilities like english to visual pipeline right. english to code some of the schema mappings can be actually automatically transformed for you mm-hmm. and then when you start productionizing your pipeline well the observability is very important and comes in the fixability of your code where copilot can suggest that fixes for some of your transformations right. can start coming into place as well So there's a tremendous amount of very exciting capabilities that the copilot comes in. It's not just the AI, it's all of this combined together into a high quality platform. Love it. Those are fantastic insights and uh congrats on the launch. Uh, yeah, it's thank you so much. It's definitely something huge for the community and data quality kind of plays a very important role. I remember mm. I was doing a meet up almost close to four months back mm-hmm. uh we called in like eight speakers 200 people uh like the audience and those who are and th- a lot of enterprise leaders were right there. everyone who presented there had data quality in this slide when they're talking about chennai mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. you get you get the context and i'm like okay this yeah. is how important data quality is without that chennai doesn't make sense uh, as such right if yeah. it is you can if you can fix your data quality right then, you can do much more in the genai space people don't realize it very often but companies like open ai yeah. majority of the effort that they've created and the machinery that they've built is not on the model is on the data engineering side exactly bring in the tremendous amount of data clean it up into a high quality data set and then start building your llm models right. it's not the other way around you can't go from the ai to data you need to have that high quality data in and the data transformation compiler now enables you to do that i love it uh one last question for both of you yeah. how do you see the future what's next that's coming uh new future for the future in ai world i know things move very fast So any thoughts Praveen Yeah I think uh, I'll give you this is a different age the business are evolving a lot you plan for the year but within your one year your plan changes actually and I think you cannot stick <laughs> to the right, plan right? right so it should be always about how do we respond to the market situations yeah. how we adjust ourselves so that's what something and how we evolve based on the customer demands and all those so that's what something is very important now keeping that in mind it should be always the outcome base yeah right what you are looking for is clean data so that you can take the better decisions yeah. you take the decision the wrong i think if the data is not clean your decisions might not be right so i think it's very important to have the decisions on the clean data number one number two i think uh, taking the decision in timely manner 
so which will not cause the decision latency decision yeah. latency is very important it might cause the millions of dollar to the companies if your data is not reaching per, from point A to point B at right time such a good and you are not ta taking decision on time. Yes, such a good point, Praveen. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I'm pretty sure our audience would love to hear these types of insights more. Yeah. I mean, what's the future? You know, AI is here already. Everyone's using it. There is definitely a lot of future in that. I think future for prophecy is just doubling down on actually making it useful for people. Right. You know, AI is there. Everyone talks about it. How much people benefit from it? I think that's a little bit of a contentious point. It's not quite yet there. That's why we're, we're getting there. exactly slowly. Yeah. slowly. But I think that has to come in through very good products. There is a lot of LLMs that are hyper generic. Yeah. We need to specialize them towards our use cases to drive towards that high quality data transformation. And yeah, well, I think you know we're doubling down on that in prophecy. We're very excited about that. We can see Databricks, and everyone here is all about that. So yeah, I think we're in a very very exciting moment in time. Same here, we are excited as well. Uh, so thanks for sharing uh, all the insights, both of you. It was yeah. such a pleasure hosting you both, and I'm pretty sure we'll keep the conversation going, but uh, all the best for the rest of the event. Perfect, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank everyone. You.